Jeff working on the 1980 F350. As you can see, I've been at work trying to get these old panels off. Take the fender off. We got new doors, we got new fenders for both sides. So one of the things I needed to do is fit the new doors uh, because like everything else that we have aftermarket sheet metal wise, these are stamped in Taiwan. These are not genuine Ford doors, so I wanted to make sure the fit was good on them. And I have to say, they're not too bad. Uh, I had to do a little tweaking here and there, but um, overall these are these fit pretty well. I got a pretty nice gap along here. Uh, body line lines up nicely, top and bottom. I've got a good even gap along the bottom. Yeah. A little bit fatter at the front. The only place I'm not, it's, it's not exact, is, is here. And I, I don't exactly remember how the old door fit. But we do have a little bit of a, a fat gap here for most of this door edge. But this is not a truck that's going to go to shows. Um, I don't even know if he's going to take it to any cruise-ins. It's, he just really just wanted a nice, wanted the truck to look nice again, have all, everything working well on it again. So we're probably going to just be content with this door gap being a little fat. Now, if this was a car that I was doing that's going to be shown, um, you know, that somebody's spending forty or fifty thousand dollars to restore, then what I would have to do is add to this door edge to tighten up this gap and make this a nice, consistent, and even three sixteenths gap the entire length of this door. But that's not what this truck is about. This truck is about Let's get it looking good. Let's get it safe to drive. Let's get it reliable. Anytime he wants to jump in it and go, he can jump in it and go. If he wants to take it down to the local cruise in one night, he wouldn't be too embarrassed to take it down there. It's going to look like a really nice truck again. But this is where money and time gets spent is really fitting your panels to the extreme and making sure you've got even consistent gaps everywhere and a lot of times that runs into you have to add metal to the doors to tighten up those gaps so we're going to keep going with uh, fitting these panels i didn't tape any of the disassembly on the door on this side i, I kind of wanted to get some of this done and get this door checked especially this one I, I can't remember but i think i haven't checked the other door it's probably stamped in taiwan also but i knew this one was and I wanted to get it set on here and fit and checked before because we're going to take this back off. What I did up here, I don't know if you can see this in here, but I did drill some uh, locating holes in both the hinges. So when the door goes back on, I can put some pins in there and it'll line up the door where it needs to be again. So what we needed to do was get this fit because if these gaps were excessive, and it's a little big but it's not excessive if they were excessive or if they were really out of whack and i had to do some body work to the doors i wanted to get all that done before i get all the jams done because these are brand new doors so all we need to do is go around and scuff all the places where we got to paint we'll give it a couple coats of epoxy primer and then we'll get the uh, get the jams done on the doors we're still waiting on some parts to come back from the blaster. Hopefully they'll be back when these are ready so I can go ahead and jam the fenders, jam the doors, paint the inside of the, uh, the tailgate, paint the cowl, because a lot of this is brown. Most of this is brown. Uh, I do have a little bit of orange in here. After all those parts are done, I'll come back and do the uh, rust repairs that I've got to do along here. As you can see, we got some, and I do believe they sell this piece. I may go ahead and get those patch panels. 
we'll get that fixed up we'll get the jams all scuffed down all the way around we got a two-tone them so we got some orange to do and then some brown we'll make sure we cover all our factory stickers so they don't get painted and that'll leave the jams done and then we can uh, after the jams are done in here and on the doors we can remount the doors and then proceed with any final body work that needs to be done on these panels well I just got done fitting the uh, passenger side door and fender and again everything lined up really nice I had some nice door gaps the uh, the back gap on the uh, the door where it meets the B pillar of the cab is about the same as it is on the driver's side that I showed you earlier so being as they're consistent I'm not going to worry about them they look the same from side to side the only issue I have had so far with these doors is um, there's a couple of things on these doors I guess they're made for different year applications but this one has a lock hole which is no big deal because the door panel will cover that over it's not going to interfere with it at all the other problem I have is this hole here this is for uh, the speaker wires to pass through and it has a grommet and it holds it in there and as you can see that hole is a little bigger than the hole on our doors so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, tack a piece of, sh of sheet metal behind this hole and then I'll center up inside this hole and I'll drill a new hole that's the proper size for that grommet and that'll take care of that problem other than that these doors really fit nice um, so after I'm done with that I'm gonna go ahead and start scuffing all the edges all the jams and anywhere on this surface here that has to get painted basically I'll go in about two inches so you don't see anything uh, past the door panel all of this down here is done in brown this will all get painted the whole frame gets painted all the way around the only thing I'm going to do is I like to lay in a small bead of seam sealer along the folded edge here from the door skin it just gives it a little bit more um, it seals it up so you don't get any water that comes down from the inside of the door can work its way through here and also after these doors are installed I have a, uh, uh, a rust preventative substance that I spray all along these edges and it helps get inside of this where this pinch is because that's where you get your rust starts because the water comes down in here and then it sits in this pinch weld or this this pinch here and it just rots the doorway over time so to try and make these doors last longer I seal them up from the outside and then on the inside I spray it so it's a waxy type of uh, material so it can really uh, get down inside of that that roll over on the door skin and it helps prevent the moisture from causing any damage over time All right, I've been working away here on the uh, Ford truck getting the doors and the fenders ready to uh, go ahead and jam the fenders and the doors so that they can get put on. I wanted to show you the difference uh, between some of these panels. Now when I bought the fenders I was able to get a right side fender that is an original Ford stamping uh, but the left side was not available in an original so I ended up with a uh, aftermarket uh, Taiwan stamping now the fit and finish on the fender is pretty much on par with the original Ford stamping fender uh, like I said earlier these fenders and doors fit really nice but the main difference comes in uh, with the actual thickness of the metal this fender here okay we're gonna set this on a scale and this fender here is the Taiwan stamping and if you can see that it comes in at about right about 20 pounds 
tail. I'll go ahead and grab the original Ford fender. Ashton's having a hard morning this morning. He's uh, a little cranky. So we're gonna we're gonna put this Ford one on scale. And you can see this comes in five pounds heavier. So even though the stampings may look the same, the metal thickness is definitely different. So this fender has uh, a little bit thicker metal to it. It's more like it is the, an, an original style fender. And you find that a lot with uh, all the aftermarket panels that are available today for all these classic cars. The fit in the uh, the installation on the panels is, is really good uh, for the most part. But uh, again, the metal thickness just not the same. The only company out there doing metal in original thickness is Auto Metal Direct. And their panels are all made out of the original uh, gauge sheet metal so that you get the same weight uh, and the same finish as the original panels. Ashton, how did your door come out after you got done sanding it? You don't know? It looks pretty good. You did a good job on it. You got it all sanded down for me, so it's ready for some primer. Yeah, you did all that. Okay, so I got the door back on the truck. One reason I needed to put, it, put this door back on, well, two reasons I need to put this door back on. One, I bought a new upper hinge. Uh, for the left side because the uh, original hinge had this type of a spring in it that was uh, you would keep the door from closing on you with the wind blew uh, but that obviously is not in one piece anymore so the new hinge actually has a different style it has this roller with a spring and that that'll keep the door in a position where it doesn't uh, doesn't close just from the wind blowing so I wanted to make sure that I got the hinge back in the proper position with the door alignment everything lined up good and the uh, second thing I wanted to do was to check my alignment for where I need to put the holes for the trim now you notice Originally, the, uh, the, the body has these little pins that the, the clips go on that hold the trim. Uh, the, the clips will be put back on using a pop rivet. So what I did, uh, I used the original door for some measurements. I laid out a piece of tape here on the door. And then I measured off from this edge back along the door on the original door where the pin location was and I marked marked my spots on the on here where I needed to draw my holes. Now this has a clip here, clip here, clip here and then there's a stud with a you got a stud with a nut that goes through these bigger holes. What what's doing good? The truck. Truck's doing good. It's coming along pretty good, huh? Yeah. We're going to be painting it pretty soon. That's right. So it's nice having the, the doors that are undamaged for the most part, just rusty, so that I can take measurements off of to make sure I get this trim in the right place. Two, I was able to, uh, to line up down the door and the body and make sure everything was in line so when the trim goes back on, everything will be lined up nice on the, on the doors. Yeah, lined up nice. yeah, it'll all be lined up nice, huh? Got to have the trim trim lined up nice or it won't look right yeah, that so what I've done over here on this door I kind of laid out I laid out a tape piece of tape right on the uh, the break in the door the lower part of the door this way I could take a measurement from here to here from that line up to the center of the pin and then I did the same thing I went from the front of the door and I measured back where each pin sets on the door. I wrote my measurements down and then I'll transfer that to the other door and then I'll do the same thing on the uh, the new door. I'll lay a piece of tape right on the body line. This way I have a reference place to, mark, to uh, measure up from to the pin 
to uh, not the pin, but where I want to put my holes uh, for the for the pop rivets to attach the uh, the molding clips to. So that's how we're going to go about getting all that set up. That's one of the things we're going to get done today. And then uh, it's just a matter of getting these fenders wiped down and cleaned up. Get the booth cleaned out. We'll get everything set up in here and get the uh, fenders ready. Fenders and doors ready to paint the jams. So we're going to paint all the inside surfaces since all they're going to need is a uh, co couple coats of epoxy primer and put the color on. Now we're also going to go ahead and lay in some uh, seam sealer on the edge here like I talked about earlier just to, to seal this up this even more. No yeah, no battery. You're not going to be starting this truck up. Nope. nope. All right. Bye. Have a good trip. So that's the agenda for today, is to try and get these, try and get all these things ready to go uh, so we can get, get these painted and then get them installed back on the truck. Uh, so one of the things I've been working on here, as you can see, is getting the trim set on the truck. Now the new panels do not come with these uh, little studs on the uh, surface to attach the mounting clips to. Uh, so you have to locate your holes and drill hole, you have to locate and drill holes to attach the clips to that holds the pieces of trim on. And these are the trim pieces here. So I got the door done yesterday and uh, I established this piece by measuring up from this body line right here on the old door to the pin and then I laid a piece of tape along here at the height where the pin would be and then I measured the old door from the front edge back to each area where there was a molding clip now this uh, top piece had three push on clips and, and two uh, studs with nuts on it. So we got those set. The bottom piece I did in a similar way uh, but I wanted to make sure everything was lined up so I reinstalled my rear piece in the cab corner and then uh, got my holes front and back drilled where it uses a stud and a nut so that I could get the get the the horizontal set. So I got that piece on. Now I'm working on the fender pretty much the same manner. Uh, I'll do that with the, uh, the top piece there. I needed to adjust this top piece of trim just a hair where the, uh, the front of it curved there. When I put it up on this new fender it didn't quite match the curvature so just uh, found out where it needed to be bent a little bit more and Gave it a whack with a couple couple whacks with the dead blow hammer. Now the piece I'm working on now is this piece here that goes right on here. As you can see, it follows the contour of the wheel opening. So I'll take you back over here to the the original fender. And basically, what I've done is I'm making a template on the fender and I, I laid out a piece of heavy paper here on the fender and I found this body line along here and traced it and then cut it out and then I found all my holes where that piece attaches to and that's where I'm going to uh, I drove my holes right through the paper into the into the, the fender and then I can take this piece off the fender transfer it to the new fender, lining it up with this body line, and then I can mark where my holes need to go, and it'll set that piece exactly where it needs to be. I'm going to do this a similar uh, piece here where the badging goes on both sides, because this does have holes here, so I'll, I'll lay a piece in here on this body line up against the edge of the fender, and then find my holes, 
and then I'll be able to transfer the holes to the new fender. Did you get the package open, buddy? What did we get today? What are those? Well, those look like the seals for the side windows. Yeah. It keeps the rainwater out. Yeah, you did a great job getting that package open. Thank you so much. Pick up your pick up the. That's another part for the truck. That's a new window regulator. It makes the window go up and down. The old one was a little wore out where the gear meets, so we went ahead and got one. They're not very expensive. Did we, open all the packages? we opened all the packages. You did a great job. Thank you. Nope, it's all empty. Look. Look at that. It's just a protector so it doesn't poke a hole in the box. So back to our truck. Anyhow, it's important to get your get all these trim pieces set now. Um, for two reasons. You want to have your holes all drilled uh, prior to paint work so that when you do the paint work you get protection in your holes. Now I know some of these it may scrape some of the paint off once the uh, rivets go back in or the pieces go through the holes, but it's going to have better protection than if you drilled it afterwards. Secondly, uh, you kind of want to make sure that your trim is, is aligned nicely prior to having a monkey around with it with paint on it. You get everything set now, lined up, holes drilled, done, you'll know when it comes time to put the truck back together that everything's just going to fall right into place and there won't be any questions as to what needs to be done with anything. So that's the reason why I'm taking the time now to do all this. It's tedious, uh, but in the end it, it, it makes the truck look better. You opened it up. Okay. Well, don't... Uh, Make sure you don't get yourself cut on that because it's got some sharp teeth on it there. Yeah, it's like some sharp teeth. So we're going to continue on with getting these moldings set. I've almost finished with this driver's side. i got to do the passenger okay, side yet. And then we can uh, finish getting these, we can finish getting these uh, panels ready for primer and paint. All right, just a quick update. We've got all our panels in for the Ford truck, ready to get some epoxy primer on. Um, just wanted to make a quick description of what I'm doing. I need to go ahead and cover both sides of these panels. And uh, so I'm going to do the outsides first. I'm going to lay down a couple coats of epoxy primer on these and then uh, a couple coats of the um, uh, feather fill top coat uh, filler primer. And then once that's dried and dried over the weekend, I can go ahead and flip these over and I'll be able to uh, paint the back sides with some epoxy and go ahead and color coat those straight off the epoxy and whatever overspray gets on the outsides of the panels will just get sanded off when I do my block sand on those panels. So it saves a little time and effort as far as trying to uh, mask up the insides if I was to do the insides of the panels first and cut them in with the color. Also, uh, whenever, I try, whenever I'm painting anything, especially with epoxy primers or primers, I try and do as much stuff as I can. So I've got the uh, quarter panel here out for Project Zombie. This is the right side quarter. And we're going to go ahead and get some epoxy primer on the insides of this panel where it will not be accessible once it's installed. And that way that'll leave this finished and ready to be installed on the car. So that's where we're at. You've seen me prime before. I'm not going to go ahead and videotape it, but uh, I'll, get, I'll show you the results when everything's finished. Well, we put some color on last night, and uh, I wasn't real happy as it was going on. It's a whole lot lighter than what's on the truck, and the truck's never been repainted. I had to paint mixed to the codes on the sticker on the truck. So it is the right paint code color according to the, uh, the original sticker. But as you can see, this is, this is so much lighter than the brown that you've seen on this truck <clears throat> from the time I've been working on it. Um, 
This has actually got three coats of color on it. And uh, it really wasn't getting as dark as I needed. Now here's a comparison, I don't know how much you can tell, between the uh, original door and the new color on the door, new door. It's, as far as the doors go, it's close. And I don't know why there's a difference. Uh, this new paint color is very, very transparent. Very transparent. As I started spraying it, I already knew it was going to take a lot to cover it. Uh, and I'd almost wished I'd used a black epoxy underneath of it. It may have covered better, might have been, might have come out a little darker. Regardless, it just is not that brown. It's just not that brown. So back to the paint store. I went this morning and we had some more paint mixed up. They went back to a 1979 Ford color, which uh, here's the difference in that. As you can see, the color on the left is what I sprayed last night. And this on the right is the color I had made today. So I think uh, this is going to be a very good match to the brown that we need. That's almost a dead match. So, not sure what's going on here. Um, you know, funny things used to happen on the assembly lines back then. This could have been an extremely early build truck. And when it came down the line for the two tone colors, this brown was still in the gun and they just shot it. I don't know. I wasn't there. But, I have to deal with it now. So this is what we're dealing with. I've got to lay on another coat or two on uh, all these parts here. They don't have clear coat on them yet, so I'm still within my 24 hour window to just spray right on top of this and it, it'll be okay. And then we can clear everything and the world will be at peace again. Well, yesterday afternoon I resprayed the doors and the inner fenders with the uh, new color that we had made up and I must say big difference this is a lot closer to what should be on the truck as far as the color that's on the truck as you can see this this darker brown this is a brown this is this is brown it's not caramel that other color was more of a caramel color so don't know what the deal is there, but we're going to go with this darker brown. And uh, that's going to get us where we need to be as far as the uh, colors matching the old colors on the truck. So, don't always believe your paint tag. Don't know exactly what the deal is. Again, I said earlier, not sure if it is a misprint or if this was just because it was uh, an early build. The owner did inform me that this was an early build and I looked at the tag again. The uh, tag date is a September of 79 and uh, he said this truck was ordered actually in July of 79 as an 80 model. So it's a good possibility it came down the line and they sprayed whatever brown was in the gun. I don't know. But anyhow, we've got it figured out and uh, the owner should be pleased with the, the colors that go on it. I think they'll complement each other quite nicely. So that's going to bring this video to an end. Uh, hopefully you got something out of this as far as the processes, again, for doing some paint work, problems you can run into when working with older vehicles and original colors, and uh, give you a little bit of insight as to what you might be up against if you're contemplating going back with uh, old colors on a vehicle. So again, I thank everybody for following along and I uh, hope you keep coming back and checking in on the progress on the truck. We're going to move on to getting the, uh, uh, the cab fixed, rust repairs done on the cab, get our jams done on the cab. And meanwhile, we're going to let these fenders and doors set up for a while and then we can flip them over while they're on the stands and go ahead and block sand them on the stands and uh, do any slight repairs that may need to be done as far as any low spots we find. 
and that will leave everything ready to go back on. So keep tuning in uh, and you'll keep seeing the progress going on with this truck. We probably got another couple works, a couple months worth of work to do and uh, should be pretty close to being finished up by then. So we'll see you again real soon.